Hello everybody and welcome back to the World Series of Commander. I'm your host, Christopher Lawrenson, also known on social media as Wait Wait Don't Kill Me. We're going to be looking at Planar Portal, one of the new decks that came out with the new Commander set with the release of the Dungeons and Dragons world. And I'm going to go through every legendary creature in the deck and see kind of how they might stack up in our format in the 1v1 tournament. We're going to see would I run it, would I not run it, what am I going to add if I do, and then when I'm done there I'm just going to go and do like a quick kind of look at all the other cards that came out in the set. Uh, I'm not going to touch on cards that have already been out. I will touch on new cards, and but I will also touch on old legendary creatures because they weren't in every, uh, every commander deck. Some of them are new to definitely being played. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start with the face card, uh, which is Prosper Tomebound. Let me pull them up there for you. All right. So Prosper Tomebound is a legendary creature, Tiefling Warlock, Obviously, he's a legendary creature. Otherwise, moving on. Uh, so he's a 1-4, 2 red, and a black death, with death touch. And he has, at the beginning of your end step, exile the top card of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. He also has, whenever you play a card from exile, create a treasure token. So we've got some mana ramp in, in, in Ragdos that is not just straight up based on swamps. So that's kind of nice. And we've got some card advantage. So I really like Prosper as a com as actually as a commander. I think he's really good. He's probably one of the best ones in the deck. He basically allows us to play really big spells, right? So he allows us to kind of get him out and then start kind of playing stuff from Exile off the top of our deck and then kind of make a bunch of treasure tokens and make big splashy plays that Black probably wants to do. I mean, like, even if you're just playing like a like a Grave Titan all the way up to um, a, uh, what is, what is it, uh, like an Exanguinate for a bunch, right, um, to just kind of knock your opponent out. So I think I think Prosper is very good. I mean, he's a 1-4 with Death Touch. That's also, he's a nice blocker there. Uh, if they, They're not going to want to swing in with their biggest creature because you can just kind of like, boom, put Prosper in front and you're in black, so maybe you'll reanimate him. Um, so it's a pretty good trade. Um, as far as what I would put in Prosper, uh, one of the first things I thought of was Uba Mask. So Uba Mask is a artifact for four mana. It says if a player would draw a card, that player removes that card from the game face up instead. And each player may play cards he or she removed from the game with Uba Mask this turn. So every card you draw can trigger Prosper, and not only that, it punishes your opponents who are maybe trying to draw a lot of cards. It's a very, like, uh, we recently right, just had Hole Breacher banned. This is a very Hole Breacher-esque effect that I would say is actually still pretty good. Um, I, I actually might start running this in a lot of my other decks, especially my Boros ones that aren't drawing very many cards. I'm not going to wheel with them because... Nobody wins uh, if you do that, right? Because I exile on my cards too, and I, I don't get any mana. It's just, it's just a bad day. Um, but uh, this card really punishes, you know, like a Ristic Study or a Consecrated Sphinx um, at, a, at a regular table uh, of, four, of four players because they draw the card, you know, on your turn, and if they don't have the mana to use it, it's gone. And not only that, you could be exiling win conditions, with this like it's that's pretty spicy i think um but in prosper it, it it's just also just really it just turns every single one of your cards into you can make a treasure token um so it's it's going to trigger prosper a lot uh next i would uh drop in is uh tibble cosmic imposter always nice to get a few planeswalkers into the deck this one is a little close on the pricey side so you would spend one of your entire week's budget uh, pretty much on Tibble as Planeswalkers generally go, but he is a Planeswalker that will slot into into the deck, and so he exiles the top. Uh, so let me read him. Like as Tibble enters the battlefield, get an emblem with. You may play cards exiled with Tibble, and you may spend mana as though they were mana of any color to cast those spells. Um, so it's plus two. Exile the top card of each player's library. So it's actually giving you two cards. Um, and then minus three, exile target artifact or creature. So uh, that's definitely going to be worth it. Um, get rid of your opponent's worst thing. So he's got two modes that are definitely good there for, for 
uh, Prosper. And then his minus eight, exile all cards from all graveyards, add red, red, red. Uh, I, I guess you might use this. I mean, if you're in a, there, you've got a graveyard strategy, but you got to get to the minus eight to do it, which, I mean, it's two ticks and it's 1v1, so that, that does make it a lot easier. But still, you shouldn't, you obviously shouldn't rely on uh, ultimates in your in your planeswalkers um but yeah his plus two is really good his plus two is going to get you some card advantage it could take cards away from your opponents you don't have to cast the card it could just you could just leave it in exile forever if it's like something you don't ever want them to have back like if, if you think it's a creature that's a combo piece um if you were to cast that right they could kill it and then they get in their graveyard and they could recur it etc 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 um so you could just leave it exiled but i think he's he's definitely a very worth inclusion um uh, in the deck um that's not in there already uh, also, obviously, Opposition Agent, um, it's just good in every deck that runs black. Um, you're, uh, you, you just, because it exiles the card. Um, it's, like, doubly good, right? You're, not only are you stopping your opponents from tutoring, your opponents, you play a green player, right? They're tutoring for a land, they, they, you flash in Opposition Agent. Now, not only did you get their land, you got a treasure, like that's probably what you're gonna do with it mostly which is kind of a jerk move but it is 1v1 format so sometimes you gotta you gotta get in there uh it's a spicy play uh definitely definitely a good card to include but again i think it's going to I, if i if i'm not mistaken opposition age is going to take another one of your like weekly budget hits so you would add this one probably a little bit later like when you when you make the the finals right you that that that's when i would start adding the opposition agent on those later upgrades when you're really kind of trying to you know get all those wins under your belt uh oh that's not what you need to be seeing you need to be seeing that <laughs> magus of the will uh so mag obviously we can't afford the other uh yagmas will to just kind of get cards out of a grave but magus of the wheel is definitely affordable uh it's a two and a black for a three three and then another two and a black tap ex exile magus of the will and until end of turn you may play land and cast spells from your from your graveyard if a card would be put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn exile that card in se oh i thought he exiled the graveyard or and then you cast him that way well he's still a good card so you should still run it but he doesn't trigger prosper so whoops <laughs> moving on so, Dream Devourer is a fun card, right? It's got the foretell mechanic. Uh, it basically turns every single one of your spells in your hand into make a treasure token, right? So, there's there's no reason not to not to cast your spells this way. I think. Um, so, Dream Devourer one in a black for a zero three demon cleric. Each non land card in your hand without foretell has foretell. Its foretell cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by two. Right, and foretell is during your turn. You may pay to exile uh, that exile that spell, and then you can cast it later for its foretell cost. So you're still casting it for the same amount, um, but now you're casting it from exile, and you're getting a treasure token. And also, whenever you foretell a card, Dream Devourer gets plus two plus O oh until end of turn. So you could also get in there for some beats, I guess, if um, they don't have anything that's gonna chump him with the three power which they might so you, you probably won't get in there for beats but again uh you're not gonna want you're not gonna want to lose your dream devourer all right so next chandra torch of defiance this is i'm not sure actually if this one is in budget but if it is also a really good uh inclusion in the deck exile uh two red red for a four loyalty planeswalker plus one exile the top card of your library you may cast that card if you don't chandra torch of defiance deals two damage to each opponent so it's like card draw it's, it's gonna and it's gonna get you a treasure your other plus one gets you two red red to your or gets you red red to your mana pool um so if you know you usually that's the one you do on the first turn you play chandra because you don't have the mana to cast the exiled card um, and that gives you a little bit more mana to kind of do things. I mean, she's she's pretty much my favorite mana rock in all of existence, uh, as it were. Uh, her minus three, she deals four damage to target creature, um, and she's still alive when she does it. So that's also really good. And then her minus seven is you get an emblem. Whenever you cast a spell, the emblem deals five damage to target creature or player. So, yeah, if you get that off, also, you know, you're, you're going to start putting the hurt on your opponents. Let's give a quick check, see what her cost is right now um yeah so if you get her out of the signature spell back a kaladesh um you can you can get her in the deck all right up next i don't actually so this 
I don't know why Hedonist Trove wasn't included in the deck. Um, the deck itself is a lot of high CMC cards, as, as a lot of the precons generally tend to be, right? Um, they their, their their mana curves are, are a little high out of the box um and but prospers especially can be right because you're casting things from exile you're making treasure tokens you can get to those high costs and i think that's why they did what they did but they didn't put hedonist trove in there and it's five, i mean it's five black black so seven mana um it just seemed right up its alley i'm guessing they didn't because it was in uh, a recent commander set already right so that that's probably why they chose not to do so maybe they just don't want to like do too many similar cards back to back uh but you know five black black when hedonist trove it's an enchantment when hedonist trove enters the battlefield exile all cards from target opponent's graveyard so you only have the one opponent in this particular scenario um you can play land cards with exiled with it and you can cast non-land cards exile with hedonist trove and spend mana uh, you can't cast more than one spell this way each turn, right? And we're making treasures off of that. So, like, it, it doesn't say you can, you know, spend mana as over any color, but with the treasure tokens, uh, you basically can. And you're playing their lands if they have any in there. So, you play a land, make a treasure. I'm pretty sure you make a treasure off Prosper. Hold on, let me look real fast. Uh, you know, whenever you play a card from Exile, yes, you make a treasure token. So, Hedonist Trove, I normally don't like it because it's like a seven mana and then like maybe not do anything right away but i i think in prosper it's it's pretty worth plus it's, it's graveyard hate who doesn't want a little bit of graveyard hate all right next up <laughs> knowledge pool uh i hate this card i hate it so much but it's going in prosper it's 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 not not going in prosper uh it, like i think it's just so funny i mean it's Six mana artifact when Knowledge Pool enters the battlefield, each player exiles the top three cards of their library. Okay. Whenever a player, uh, uh, and that, so whenever a player casts a spell from his or her hand, that player exiles it. If the player does, he or she may cast another non-land card exiled with Knowledge Pool. So that includes the, the well, in this case, the six cards we would have exiled when we cast it. So you, you cast that spell, you exile it, and then you get to choose a card instead from Knowledge Pool. Um and you cast that card instead without paying its mana cost. So, I mean, now all the spells we cast are from Exile, and we're, uh, yeah, we're making, we're just making things clunky for our opponent. We're probably making things clunky for ourselves too, but don't, just don't play the Knowledge Pool if you're not ready to play the Knowledge Pool. Uh, don't, just don't play the Annoying Card if you're not ready to play the Annoying Card. I mean, this is basically how that goes, right? You don't want to we're trying to win we're not trying to like make our opponents have a miserable time either i think right uh all right now next uh this card is a card that i absolutely love i love to put it in every deck i can that it like works in right now uh it's in uh my caravac deck because double cast triggers are just amazing and it also um is a good nice little control spell or control card right like your opponent's like i want to do this good thing um and then they get frustrated because they can't obviously the best way to play around uh let's probably say what the card is in case we put these not on youtube the best way to play around possibility storm is to play a low value low cost spell that you don't really want and try to essentially cascade is what it is into something better um so possibility storm three red red uh whenever a player casts a spell from his or her hand so it doesn't affect your commanders and ooh, and it doesn't affect the spells you cast from exile i just noticed that okay this is getting better uh so when you cast a spell from your hand you exile that spell and then you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with the one you cast. So you cast a creature, you go to, you hit a creature, you cast an enchantment, you go to hit an enchantment, etc., etc. Uh, then you cast that spell instead without paying its mana cost um, and put all the other cards exiled uh, that this way onto the bottom of your library, including the one you, you cast originally. Um, so you get we get to cast the spells with Prosper that we're exiling and everything else that we're exiling normally. And then all other spells we're casting flip into something exiled and generate a treasure token. So, yeah, this card's just good. And it's disrupting our opponents. It's making their life annoying. Um, just generally, this this card is going to be one of my very early includes in Prosper. Um, I, I might, if, if, I, if I, you know, I might, I, might just, I might just play this, play Prosper just for the sheer ability to play possibility storm i 
I, I will never pass up the possibility to possibility storm. All right. All right. So moving on to uh, one of the other legendary creatures in the deck. Kara... Karazakar? I think it's Karazakar. Karazakar, the Eye Tyrant. Um, so he's a Beholder, a uh, three black red for a five five. Whenever you attack a player, tap target creature that player controls. Okay, and goad it. Let me read goad. Until your next turn, that creature, the goaded creature, attacks each combat if able. Okay, well, maybe you want them to do that. And attacks a player other than you, if able. Okay, so you, you can make your opponents attack in this competition. They're, they're gonna, in the World Series of Commander, they're going to attack you because they're not able to attack anybody else. Um, and then whenever an opponent attacks another one of your opponents, you and the attacking player each draw a card and lose a life. Well, that's never going to happen, right? And you'll see that actually with a few cards in this uh, deck. There, there's some very political cards which they've been printing lately, which I really, really, really like. I love uh, politic cards; they're great. But particularly in this format, <clears throat> I'm not gonna go any further into this card. You just don't, don't play it. unless you're playing it for the memes and you just you want to play a beholder, which I, I, I can respect that. Like if that's just what you want to do, by all means, go for it. Uh, your opponent's gonna sit across the table from you and look at you and just be like. I mean, it, you're going to psych them out. Like, if you're just going for, like, the total, like, psych out play, play this as your commander, it's going to do it. There's, they're going to be a little confused. Um, but other than that, I mean, like, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't play this. I guess, like, what is There's that assassin that, like, taps and destroys tap creatures. So, like, you, know, you could do, like, this weird rat. That's, like, about the, the best thing I could think about in the, the 1v1 format that you could do with this uh but yeah i i really like this card i, w I would play it in a four player pod 100 percent uh but not not 1v1 uh unless you're just going for the memes which is a thing so then we'll just move on to lorkin warlock collector uh this guy has like the exact opposite i think he's good in a four player pot i think he is phenomenal in a two player in a 1v1 format uh so L lorkin is five black black for a flying devil six six whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere so their hand their library the field whatever um from anywhere, you may pay life equal to its mana value. If you do, put it onto the battlefield under your control. It's now a warlock in addition to its other types. If a warlock you control would die, exile it instead. Somebody, one of my friends described this to me because basically, because I, so I play a uh, Tergrid deck because I, every once in a while I want my friends to, to hate me. Uh, <laughs> but somebody described this to me as a fair Tergrid and I, I would have to agree with them. Uh, I think this is great in a four-player pod. I think it's made even better in a in a one v one format because you can use you basically just build a mono black control shell and and go to town. Uh, you get you kill their creature, you get their creature, you can then either keep their creature and beat them in the face with it, or if you think their creature is a very important combo piece, you can sack their creature and tell them they can never have it again. Uh, so these are all very good things that you want to do with your time. Uh, mono black control can be very good. I would know because I just this last season I played Crick, uh, which comes it's right. He comes out of the the Madness deck, the Anji deck, and he's a, a four and then three Phyrexian mana, which is you can either play a black or two life, and uh, he basically turns all of your black mana pips into Phyrexian mana pips, so you can either play a black and two life, like any black pip on the card anywhere, so like you can do like just stuff for free continuously over and over and over again, like one of the, like a, a classic thing you can do is uh, Chainer, which is black, 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 and three life, uh, you, re you can put a creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, um, and you, you basically choose Gary, who comes in and gives you life equal to your devotion to black and you sack him and then you, you just loop that over and over and over again and you you kill your opponent uh so really good um and so the life like paying the life for the creature very very difficult but if there's one thing playing crick last season taught me is you can you can get that life back right you're gonna go get your whip of erebos you're gonna get your spells like you're gonna get gary you're gonna get kakusho you're gonna get extort um you're gonna get I would even run spells like Corrupt, which be deal damage. Since you're in Mono Black, you deal damage to things equal to the number of swamps you have, um, and then gain life the same way. 
um you and which also then kills the creature and then uh it, it kills the creature you gain you the life you then pay the life and get the creature like spells like corrupt are just really good actually in this deck it basically gets you the creature for free um it's like you're playing blue <laughs> it's just in a weird screwed up black sort of way um and so yeah i i i'd, I'd probably i'd probably like i really want to play prosper because like i said i could play possibility storm but uh, after playing Crick, I mean, Crick didn't, he didn't quite make it to the very end, right? Because you remove Crick and it's bad, which oh, this guy's going to be the same way, right? If you can't protect them, he's going to die or your, your deck might just, just might not function. Uh, but he, uh, I, you know, last season I, I, I did a, I did a discard and, you know, uh, targeted removal kind of, you know, much standard mono black control and it worked out pretty well. Um, so like maybe I'll keep trying to like perfect that, and this will, this is an opportunity for me to kind of give that a new, give that a chance again, and uh, uh, still with a, with a fresh commander. But yeah, so I think Lorcan is is very very good, and he'll do amazing things. Um, so oh well, I don't have it fully up, but I was looking at some stuff. Uh, what you should put in the deck definitely a mind shatter. Let's just go ahead and click on that there because, like I said, it can come from anywhere. So mind shatter, uh, X black black target player discards X cards at random. So you once you get Lorcan out, right, you're gonna be able to, um, you're gonna have the mana to basically make your opponent pitch their entire hand. So you'll mind shatter them uh, for their hand size. They'll discard their hand, and then you pay the life to get whatever whatever you want uh seems pretty dece um oh okay no see i didn't knew what i was doing apparently uh and then, all right so torment of hailfire very similar thing right uh x and then black black whatever x is you repeat the following process that many times uh each opponent loses three life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card right so they have to sack creatures they have to set, discard cards they have to lose life all of these things are good right and especially if they're losing life instead of discarding the things you've been paying life this whole time you you need to get them on your level all right like they they can pay some life too all right this is this is a team effort for one of them to die for or for for one of you guys to die um and then obviously uh some super secret spicy tech right that's gonna go in in <clears throat> excuse me that's gonna go it with this Lorcan demon or sorry devil uh villas broker of blood five black 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 he's the demon uh flying eight eight so that's already really good um but black pay two life and then target creature gets minus one minus one to one of turn so he can kill things um he was this guy was an all-star also in my crick deck uh the best part of him at the bottom whenever you lose life draw that many cards so you pay the life you get their creature and then you draw the cards to kill more of their creatures so you can pay more of the life um villas is just insane um if you can give him lifelink he will he'll get that life back for you because an 8-8 flying beater he will get in the only way he's gonna go away definitely is that they if they remove him uh they target remove him he's he's big and he flies he's not gonna he's not gonna go down easy uh, all right Gonti lord of luxury so there's another legendary creature in the deck um that you can now use as your commander i love Gonti as a commander he is an amazingly fun commander to build right you, you play him you recycle him you get his effect over and over again so he's two black black death touch two three when Gonti lord of luxury enters the battlefield look at the top four cards of a target opponent's library Sorry, one opponent. Exile, exile one of them face down. Put the rest on the bottom of that library in a random order. You may look at and cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana any color uh, to cast that spell. Um, you know, so even if Gonti leaves, you can still cast a spell. Um, so you can remove cards off the top of your opponent's library. You take their best stuff. You can just leave it exiled forever. You can cast it. He's, he's just a lot of fun, like a kind of like, you know, build your own deck using your opponent's stuff, which is always fun in mono black. The only problem is you need him to enter the battlefield over and over and over again and in order to do that you need to either a have him go to the command zone a couple times and generate a lot of mana to, to get him back out which is like you know so the mono black doublers crypt gas um cabal coffers etc but those are very difficult to have a critical mass of especially when you have a 15 dollar a week budget you're you're not gonna 
you're not going to be getting you're not going to be getting them very often. So then your other option is to sacrifice him right and then reanimate him and things like that. And again, those are also very um, pricey uh, budget wise, right? And then being able to go get those things, you know, having enough of them plus tutors. I mean, there are some cheap tutors in mono black. I think he can be okay, but the it, I, I, the problem is the the money the money restriction um getting getting the critical mass of things in there ahead you know early to be able to to do him a lot it it it's it will be fun it will not be easy if you choose to use gaunty lord of luxury as your commander in the world series um uh, then you're you're gonna be having a hard time in the early game um so just you just gotta kind of buckle down make sure you get those wins and then you start spending the money to kind of get those final key pieces in it's it's i think it's going to be a tough road uh but if you want those pieces uh one of the cheap ones obviously is conjurer's closet um so with enough tutors i guess you can you know search that up uh with enough cheap tutors. that's probably the first upgrade kind of path i would go with is cheap tutors and conjurer's closet and whatever cheap reanimators i can get um but then you know you're going to be able to protect conjurer's closet um so maybe that that yawgmoth <laughs> that we uh, that we showed earlier uh get that uh in there that way in case somebody gets rid of it you can cast it out of your graveyard uh on the cheap um but if they remove it one too many times you're you're not getting that conjurer's closet back you're in mono black you're you just, you're you're not unless your opponent is in maybe red or green and you gaunted an eternal witness big brain play save it for later <laughs> Yeah, but you have to get really lucky for that. All right, and then obviously we've talked about Animate Dead, right? You're going to play Gonti, you're going to sack Gonti, you're going to animate Gonti, and now you've got two cards from your opponent. Ha ha, hee hee, let's go for it. Um, Crypt Ghast, right? You're going to get those, get that big mana so you can play Gonti over and over and over again and then cast their spells, right, in the same turn. Uh, once again, though, it's a little pricey. Let's scroll down here, see what we're at. Yeah, so that's a, that's a $10 ad right there. Um, very difficult to do. Um, all right. Here's another legendary creature in the deck. Uh, this one is a little bit more straightforward. I don't know if this is going to be great. It, it's going to be fun. Uh, Itali, the Primal Storm, four red red for a 6-6 six, six Elder Dinosaur. So you get an Elder Dinosaur that is really loud, screamy, and just, just really, you know, BA looking. Uh, so, <laughs> Itali, Primal Storm. Whenever Itali, Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. So... It's okay in 1v1, right? Because you're only hitting two players. Obviously, in a four-player pod, Atali is infinitely better. Um, the more players you have, the better Atali gets. So you're kind of playing at a handicap if you choose Atali. Um, exile the top card of each player's library whenever he attacks. Then you may cast any number of spells from those cards without paying their mana cost, right? And then timing restrictions don't apply um, when you when you when Atali's triggering. There's there's not much, at least as far as I, I can tell, strategy in build. Like, this, you're not getting clever when you're building a Tali, right? You're, you're basically taking as many combats as possible. And this kind of falls into the same problem as Gonti, where a lot of the... Well, not a lot, but, like, you know, especially the good ones. Uh, extra combat spells are $5, $10 uh, a card. Uh, that's not to say you can't do it, right? You it's very very doable i think and and you know quite funny um it, it fits it it fits that same bill also fits that same bill uh, ironically about you know taking your opponent and stuff um of but yeah you you can do it so wait basically what you would do is you either you would fill the deck with extra extra combats like seize the day right untap target artifact or sorry untap target creature uh after this main phase there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase and it has uh, sorry it's three in a red and it's flash black two in a red um, you know, so this, this card though, is like I said, they're a little bit pricier. This one's $6. Uh, then you've got like, I think it's like world at war is a $10 version, but it has a uh, rebound or something like that. Uh, so, I mean, the repeatable ones are a little pricey. I think the, I think the one time use ones are a little bit cheaper. So, um, you can, you can definitely like load a bunch of the cheap ones up in early in like the first week or two. And then you can add in the seize the day and the world at war, um, Pretty sure that's what it, you know let's just check uh i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure i'm not telling you world at war is that a real yes it is it is a real card all right at the first post combat maze phase this turn there's an additional combat phase follow up additional maze so same thing 
Uh, and then you untap all creatures that attack this round, this turn. And then as rebound, which means uh, if you cast this spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves. At the beginning of your next upkeep, you cast it again for free without paying its mana cost. Also goes good in Prosper because you cast it from exile. But I don't think. I mean, I guess you could be. You probably. You probably attacking with a few things in Prosper. Eh, yeah. Play some. Play some big, big fatties and get in there. And attack again. Make a treasure. I can appreciate it. This could go in both. All right, but yeah, so that's that's how I put you know, and then and then you put the boots on Atali, right? You're gonna you know, give him protection, give him hexproof, give him shroud, give him you know all those things. Don't let don't let people kill him because you don't want to cast a six mana dinosaur for eight in mono red. This is just not good. <laughs> it's it's gonna suck. New cards in the set: Chaos Channeler. Uh, he is two red red um, for a four three. Whenever Chaos Channeler attacks, roll a d twenty. Uh, if you roll 1 through 9, exile the top card of your library, you may play it this turn. If you roll 10 through 19, exile the top 2 cards of your library, you may play them this turn. And the top ex and then a 20 is you, same thing, but 3 cards, and you may play them this turn. Um, I, do, I wouldn't include this card. I, this would be one of my first cuts, um, just because, so he's, he has, to, he has to attack to do it, right? And he's only a 4-3. He, he can get... He can either, he, I mean, he, he, he can get blocked by something pretty beefy, I think, pretty easily. Um, not to mention, so like if he's in, if he, you, you got him in with Prosper, right? Um, you you got to cast him for four. Okay. Now you can't cast Prosper. Then you got to cast Prosper for four. All right, so now he can attack, and you have Prosper out. Except you won't be able to cast anything because you've cast prosper this turn so now i have to wait again now by time you can attack with this guy and still be able to cast things off the top of your library they have a blocker ready to just, you know like he, you're gonna use them one time in my opinion i, I think that's all you're gonna get right in a four-player pod you may use them multiple. you might you might get more in there right because there's always gonna be like that, that one player that didn't have a blocker right but 1v1 your opponent you only have the one option to attack and if they they got a three three like a like a three three beast. I don't know. It's definitely gonna happen at some point. Uh, they're 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 just gonna put that in front of this dude, and that that's it. You, you the end of you. That's the that that's the end of that. I'd rather draw something else. All right, Grim Hireling, another card. I think I'm gonna cut right away. Uh, so three and a black for a three two. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create two treasure tokens. I mean that that's pretty good, right? You've got to get in. And if you're getting in, especially in Prosper, that means you're probably getting in with big boys or big girls. Uh, and um, you, you, so you're getting in with big fatties, but you're not. So you're probably already got them on the back foot. Those treasures, are, I feel like they're just kind of win more. And then you can pay a black, sacrifice X treasures. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. So that last part, I really don't like. You're sacrificing the treasures to give things minus one. Like, you, you, so you could. Let me put it this way: You could sack three treasures and give some for and give something for essentially four mana, right? Because every treasure could have been a mana, um, and give something minus three minus three until end of turn. Or for three mana, which you could use the treasures for, you could have just cast murder, which kills anything. Yet now, obviously, indestructible things and the like, uh, you, you're gonna need to give minus. Like some, I guess it, if you're if, if you're finding those to be a problem. Then yeah, include this uh, this this you know tiefling rogue here, but if you're not like having you know trouble with indestructible things, which I I personally haven't seen too much of in the last two seasons, um, then I, I I think you'll you'll be okay. I mean, yeah. So I, it it's the effect is nice, but I think there are better things you can do with those treasures. All right, wild magic sorcerer. This one I do like. Right, so the first spell you cast from exile this turn has cascade. Is what it's so three. Sorry, three to red for a four three, and then the first spell you cast from exile this each, each turn. Sorry, each turn has cascade. So he doubles up your cast from exiles triggers with prosper. Right, so you you play this guy, um, and then you exile a spell. You cast that spell. You get a treasure. You cascade. You cast another spell. You get another treasure. Um, that's that that's pretty good i mean and you're getting you're getting a cascade trigger and cascade is a really good mechanic um you're you're just card advance cards for free are the best kind of cards 
All right, uh, Death Tyrant, four and a black for a four six. So five mana, four six, not terrible with Menace. Um, he has negative energy cone, which means whenever an attacking creature you control or a blocking creature an opponent controls dies, create a two two black zombie creature token. Okay, five and a black, return Death Tyrant from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. I don't think this card is particularly good in Prosper. I mean, it's okay because like it it turns your creatures into zombies and their creatures into zombies. So like that's that's nice, I guess. Uh, probably going to be an, a, a, a pretty quick cut. I do, however, have a Verena deck that this probably is going to go in. It, it's like, oh, you blocked my because it, it. First of all, it doesn't even it doesn't even have to be a non. It doesn't say non-token creature. Whenever an attacking creature you control or a blocking creature your opponent controls dies create a 2-2 black zombie creature token so then that that token then attacks again and becomes another token doesn't even enter tapped <laughs> so like it, you you can attack with a zombie for free and then just it's like the zombie is vigilance if it dies um so not great in this deck but I I can think of some other decks that it definitely would be spicy in um, all right, whoops. So, uh, you find some prisoners, one and a red, instant, choose one. Destroy target artifact or exile the top three cards of target opponent's library. Choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You may play that card and you may spend mana as though or mana if any color to cast it. Uh, modes are always good. You always want to have options on your cards. This gives you two very good options, right? Either destroy a very problematic artifact or you know, turn, turn two, destroy their turn one soul ring. Mm. Well, uh, or if you know there's nothing worth destroying, exile the top three cards of your, uh, their library, and then uh, you can cast that. And then does it? Do they say exile the uh, target opponent's library. Choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You play cards. And you color to yeah, they say exiled. So like, hey, uh, those cards are gone forever. Too bad. <laughs> That's I think one of the best things I like about this deck is a lot of just like. I, I hope those cards off the top weren't weren't useful for you. Like like a uh, what's the sire of S sire of stagnation or there's a there's an Eldrazi that 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 whenever a land comes into play under an opponent's control, they exile like the top two cards of their library, and then like you draw two cards, and uh, people really 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 don't like doing that. They're like I want to play this land, but what if the top of my deck is really important? People people really like the top of their deck. Don't don't get rid of it. Um, all right, another card in the in this uh, in this commander set is Hellish Rebuke, uh, which is a warlock spell um, in in D and D. Uh, until end of turn, permanence your opponent's control gain. When this permanent deals damage to the player who cast Hellish Rebuke, sacrifice this permanent, and you lose two life. Uh, so basically, they attack you, um, and they anything that hits them. They sacrifice anything that hits you. Sorry, they sacrifice and then they lose two life when they sacrifice it. Uh, this is a card that I wouldn't play in a four-player pod because what if they don't attack you? What, like, there's a lot of variables here. I think it's a really good card. Um, I wouldn't play it right away in a four. I'd have to test it, but I, it doesn't scream four-player pod at me right away in one v one. Uh, I think don't don't take this out. I I 100. This is a, like a one-sided. If they're an aggro deck, this is a one-sided board wipe. This is a really good card. One v one. Definitely, 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 definitely leave this in. This is not. This is not an immediate cut like some of those other ones. All right, hurl through hell. Another. Do not take this card out. I think two black and a red instant exile target creatures. So we're already happy. Uh, you were Vraska's Contemping. Uh, until the end of your next turn, you may cast that card, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. So not only are we exiling their creature, we're hostage-taking it, right? The hostage-taker, right, to a black and a blue creature, it comes in, you exile another creature, and uh, you, as long as it remains exiled under hostage-taker, you can cast it. Uh, this one, obviously, you can only cast it that next turn, but there's no risk of them, like, of them getting that back, like with Hostage Taker. I think that this is a, this is a very, very good card. It's removal and theft. Um, and it generates you a treasure. Ah! Definitely a good card. Uh, as you can see, like a lot of the new cards, I think, they definitely synergize best uh, with uh, Prosper. 
Uh, thus far is what I'm definitely what I'm seeing. None of the new cards really synergize with the other commanders um, specifically. Um, a lot of the reprints do synergize with like uh, uh, Karazakar. Um, uh, some of the reprints synergize well with him, uh, but um, most of the most of the new cards definitely synergize well with Prosper. So like week one when you can we can't do any upgrades, I I would keep Prosper as as the as the commander. Don't don't switch it out. Personal personal opinion. All right, Dance of the Macab. Macab I can never say this word right. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Uh, Dance of the Macabre Macabre Macab. Moving on. Uh, three black black sorcery. Each player sacrifices a non-token creature. Roll then, I, then you roll a d20, and you add the toughness of the creature you sacrificed this way. All right. So if you get a 1 through 14, which I guess you can't really get a 1, right? Because you're adding the toughness of the creature you sacrificed. Well, I guess I mean, I guess if you had nothing, then, then yeah, you, you could... Uh, you could roll one, but so one through fourteen, return a creature card put into a graveyard this way to the battlefield under your control. If you roll fifteen or greater, return two creature cards put into graveyards this way to the battlefield under your control. Um, good in a four-player pod, bad in uh, the World Series of Commander because you're gonna sacrifice right whatever you sacrifice, you're gonna get back, right? I mean, I guess they're not gonna sacrifice their wor their best thing, right? Unless they only have one good thing. So, like, if, if, if Voltron is very heavy in your meta, then yes, play this card, right? Because then... But their commander's just going to go back to the command zone, and then... So you're going to get your thing back, I guess. Five mana, kill their Voltron commander. Because you can't target it because they gave it hexproof. So, like, if, if if Voltron is a thing, then yeah, definitely... Let me leave this on your sideboard, right? To sub out uh, if, if you're going against a Voltron commander. But other than that, I think I think in the World Series commander, this this card is uh, is also a, a, a weak... Uh, a first week cut, right? You, you're not going to... You're not gonna keep this just because it's just it's not gonna hit anything spicy, I don't think. Even even rolling the, the fifteen plus, I like, eh. eh. And it doesn't center touch prosper. Alright, Reckless Endeavor, five red red. Roll two D twelve and choose one result. Reckless Endeavor deals damage equal to that result to each creature. Alright, so you, you could potentially board wipe for seven mana in red, which seems a little a little spicy, actually, in red. Like, that's a lot of mana in red to board wipe. Uh, then the other half of it is the then you create a number of treasure tokens equal to the other result. Um, so you can either do a little bit of damage to everything and then get a bunch of treasures, unless you roll, like, you just roll really hot, right? Of course, you didn't want to kill everything, and you roll really hot, and then you're just like, oops. <laughs> that's, uh, you're just like, I wanted to keep all my things, and I was hoping to roll a one on one of those. But uh, either way, so you, you do a bunch of damage to everything, and then you make a bunch of treasures. I, this this card's okay. I'm So I play D&D, &D, and uh, also you roll right to go first in, like, four-player pods, and I'm notoriously bad at rolling. I, I get low rolls all the time. Uh, so from, from, like, a personal, just, like, me standpoint, I'm not playing this card. I'm too scared. I'm too scared to just roll nothing but ones and twos and threes. I'm not touching it. Uh, <laughs> your mileage may vary if you're brave and, you know, you're just like, yeah, I'm going to get those 12 treasures. Then, then yes, run this card. Uh, but me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna stay very, very, very far away from it. Um, obviously, if I don't, like, put any board wipes in my deck um, within the first few weeks, I'll, I'll leave it in, at least for that. Um, but I'm... I'm, I'm I'm gonna take it out pretty quick. I I just I'm too scared of the rolls. I'm t <laughs> enough variants already in this game. I don't want more. <laughs> I do not want my seven mana spell to do nothing, please. Uh, like I said, play at your own risk. Your 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 risk level may be higher than mine. I'm not gonna play it. Uh, but I will not fault you if you do. Uh, uh, by all means, uh, you you do get a card with this cool image of this like. Why are they, uh, why are they running away? Who's running away? Like who rolled this? Actually, yeah. Wait, let's look at this. Image. Who rolled the die here? Like who cast this? So you have the we get the one person running away with the treasure, and the other one being burned, and then you've got the dragon doing the burning, right? So okay, who rolled? Is the dragon the spell, and like the person carrying the treasure, the one that rolled that cast the spell? So does this? Who is this, and why do they have control over a red dragon? That's what I want to know. And, like, who's this... Who's this... I guess there were two parties trying to get the same treasure from the dragon? I 
I feel like there's a there's a lot of story behind this art, and I want to know what it is. Uh, you know what? Leave in the comments. Let me know what you think is going on in this art. Who's doing what? What's going on? Uh, I don't know. Like whatever many words or less a YouTube comment allows, I uh, I want to know. <laughs> All right. Once again, though. Run at your oh, hey, that's my mic. Run at your own risk. I hope I didn't just like deafen all of you guys. All right, moving on. Uh, fevered suspicion. This is another beholder-looking art kind of guy. Six black and a red. Each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells from among those car non-land cards without paying their mana cost, and it has rebound. So rebound is this card's only saving grace in the World Series Commander one v one format, right? Um, in a four-player pod, this card is amazing. In 1v1, it's only targeting your opponent, right? It's not even targeting you. Um, I, I don't actually know why this isn't targeting you. I guess because you could play too well around it. Um, I mean, but it is eight mana. Like, it should target yourself. Um, but yeah, you're, you might not hit anything good. I, this is, this is, it's, it's pretty risky for eight mana, right? Even with, even with the rebound. So like, would you pay four mana to do this? Maybe. Maybe you have something better in your hand. I don't know. Play it around. Play. I, I, I would keep this in for the first few weeks just to see how it feels. Um, and then, I mean, this is probably going to get better, actually, as, like, the tournament goes on, right? And people get better and better things in their deck. Or it would be good early game. I don't know. When there's nothing but bombs, like, still stuck in the deck. Uh, <laughs> you'll just hit everybody's, like, Avengers of Zendikars and things. I don't know. Um, I don't, this, I, I'm on the fence on this one. Um, the rebound, like I said, is the only thing saving it, but in a, in, you're only hitting one person, so, like, oof. All right. Bag of Devouring. This one, also, don't really like. One black for an artifact. Whenever you sacrifice another non-token artifact or creature, exile it. Uh, sacrifice another, so then two and tap it. Sacrifice another artifact or creature, draw a card. And then three and tap, sacrifice the Bag of Devouring, roll a d10, return up to X cards from among cards exiled with Bag of Devouring to their owner's hands, where X is the result. So they were already on the field. You sacrificed it. And then when you sacrifice the bag, they come back to your hand? I, if you're abusing, like, ETBs, maybe this is good, right? Because, like, you can you get those ETBs again, but... I, God, I don't want to cast my spells again. Why don't they come back to the battlefield? And also, the things I want to sacrifice to this bag are tokens. I, like, there's a few token generators in the deck. There's, um, what is it? There's a like chittering witch, and which makes uh, which makes some rats onto the battlefield. I think it's equal to the number of opponents you have. So actually, you're gonna cut that right away. You're not get rid of chittering witch. Right, three three and a black two two. By the way, it comes in. You make rats equal to the number of opponents you have, and then one and a black sack a creature. Target creature gets minus two minus two till end of turn. I mean that part's good. It just doesn't make as many rats as you want. And then, then there's other token manor, makers. Um, but there's there's, and that's that's what I would want to sacrifice to this bag. But then the bag doesn't give those back, right? Because they're tokens. So you're kind of screwed there. Um, so I I don't know. I don't. It's nice card draw, which I think the deck is a little light on actually. So I mean, you may want to leave it in just for that until you get some better card draw. But I'm not sold on this. I'm not sold on this card. It's no bag of holding. All right. Uh, then Bucknard's Everfull Purse, another another weird bag. One and tap, roll a d4, and create a number of treasure tokens equal to the result. And then the player to your right gains control of Bucknard's Everfull Purse. I hate hug cards. Hug cards are the worst. I, I don't like giving my opponents uh, good things. I don't like rolling a one and then rolling a four. Uh, I hate hugs at four player po pods and hugs are really bad at two player pods where there's no politics and they're like, oh, you gave me treasures, cool. Then I won't attack you. No, they're going to attack you. They're going to. You're the only other person. Don't run this card. This one's also an early, an early, early cut. Um, unless you just, I mean, unless you're just really trying to get that mana hard, or you're playing Revel and Riches. If you're, you could also be playing Revel and Riches. If you're playing Revel and Riches, then the, it, and trying to win just by having treasures, then I could see why you would keep this card. But if you're not playing Revel and Riches, get it out of there. Um, unless you have like a sack theme as well. I don't know. If you can have a sack theme and like you sack it anytime you sack something, you get an you get a benefit. I, 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 you, you keep this card if it works with a bunch of other stuff in your deck. Um, if you're not building it that way, I think I think you I think you, you get rid of it. 
All right, Ebony Fly is uh, it's it's a new kind of mana rock. Two mana, Ebony Fly enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it for a colorless, and then for four mana, you roll a d6. Until end of turn, you may have Ebony Fly become an XX insect artifact creature token with flying, where X is the result of that d6. Uh, whenever it attacks, another target attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. So, um, you know, if you're low on resources, like card draw or whatnot, it, it, it does, which... I mean, like, I mean, Prosper has been removed a bunch of times, and you're not exiling cards. You're not getting that advantage anymore. Uh, you know, it gives you something to do with your mana. So, not the worst mana rock. Um, maybe it comes in tap, but I, th I think that's okay. I, I, I mean, until you, like, you don't need to get rid of this right away if, you know, and maybe even at all. It just, it does, it gives you something to do with that mana. I mean, it gives, it makes two things fly. And uh, evasions, turns out flyers are good. All right, but that they just are. And they get in, they beat. Solid. Yeah, put it on your Atali. You know, give Atali flying. Haha. -ha. <laughs> All right, uh, Fiend Lash. One and a red artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus O and has reach. Whenever equipped creature is dealt damage, it deals damage. It deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. So, if they block, like you put this on a big creature, and if they chump you smack something else right um so that's that's pretty that's pretty good um also you put it on a small creature i guess and effectively you put it on a little one one and it's a three three and then technically if they block with anything with toughness six or less that it, that could still die um and sorry equip two in a red oh um, this card's okay uh if you're gonna be doing a lot of attacking then you could probably keep it in uh for a bit um if not then Away it goes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Warlock class. So this is one of the class cards, right? They did a bunch of enchantments that are classes in D&D. &D. Um, so this is the Warlock class enchantment. One black mana. Uh, first, so when you cast it for one black mana, at the beginning of your end step, uh, so every end step, if an opponent, if an, sorry, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life. So, okay. A little bit of life loss. That's not so bad. Uh, whenever this class becomes level 2, look at the top 3 cards. So for 1 in the black, you make it level 2. Uh, and when it becomes level 2, look at the top 3 cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So for a total of 3 mana now, you've kind of grabbed the cards. So that's, alright, still pretty decent. And then 6 in a black to get to level 3 now. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. So... I forget the card's name off the top of my head. Um, it's an enchantment that basically, for the similar amounts of mana, right? Uh, wound reflection? Is that it? Here. Let's see. Um, wound reflection. Of, yeah, at the beginning of each end step, uh, each opponent loses life, even a life lost. They lost this turn. So it, this this card, uh, once you get it to the, which is a five and a black. Once you so. Wound Reflection is 5 in black. This is 6 in a black at the final level. Uh, so 1 extra mana plus all the mana you paid into it before. You get Wound Reflection, right? You, uh, Which is pretty good 1v1, right? So you're going to smack him in the face. Maybe you put that that sweet little lash on him, right? And, or no, sorry. You, you've got the bug. you got the insect, right? Uh, and now your insect is making your other beater. You're making your Atali fly, and you hit them for 6, and then they lose 6 at the end of the turn. It's going to accelerate the game pretty quick. Um, so, once again, if you are attacking or just making them lose life, I mean, obviously, it, it, it turns that first ability into they lose two life. Um, wait, at the beginning of your end step and then at the beginning of your end step. Oh, no, it doesn't It doesn't double up that life loss, right? Because they're both at the beginning of the end step. It doesn't even double up its own life loss. Bad card, take it out for that reason. <laughs> or, or not. I mean, no, it's it's still I think it's still a good card. It's it's a very powerful effect. Um very, very powerful effect if you can if you can get that to go off. Alright. Uh share the spoils. When share the so one in a red enchantment, when share the spoils enters the battlefield or an opponent loses the game. There's only one opponent, so ignore that part. Uh, so when it enters the battlefield, exile the top card of each player's library. During each player's turn, that player may play a land or cast a spell from among cards exiled with share the po spoils. And then they spend mana as though it were mana of any color. Uh, and when they do, they exile the top card of their library. So you you play this card. You both exile the top card of your library. Um, now both of you can play those cards. Um... I don't, 
It'll be good, like it. Yeah, you're getting treasure tokens off of it if you're playing, you know, if you're playing Prosper. But so you're you're kind of outvaluing your opponent in that way because you're making mana off of it. But you're also giving your opponent more resources. And I, I mean, this is another one of those like I think better like politic cards in a four player format. Uh, not so good one v one. Um, like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of these politic cards I think in this in this specific in this specific deck in Planar Portal. Um, and I, I I would not I wouldn't run it. Um, not for the treasure. Chart. I think there's I think there's you got plenty of other good ways to make a treasure. Take this out and put a new put in, put another Chandra in because Chandras are cool, right? I like Chandras. Um, all right, and that's that is that. Uh, that's all the new cards in the set. That is all the legendary commanders. Um, that's kind of just my general thoughts on them. How I think, how well I think they'll do. Uh, only two of them, like I said, are really kind of like you're, you're going to be struggling with. I think you're going to be struggling with Gonti just b- from a pure mana perspective, and obviously you're gonna be struggling with uh, Karazakar, the the eye tyrant, just because that. That, that's not a good effect to have in a 1v1 format. Prosper himself, I think, is very good, right? You're you're getting that bit you're you're doing you're 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 ramping up, you're getting you're getting some extra mana, you're drawing cards in a in a sort of way. Um these are all things that kinda like help decks do really well in the World Series Commander, right? So hope you enjoyed the video. Um if you want to chat more about the World Series Commander, you you can find us on social media, you can find us on Discord. Um I'm at social media at at wait underscore kill uh we're out on discord at w s o commander um sorry that's that's on twitter uh and you know obviously like subscribe um leave comments talk to us on twitter talk to us on discord the more you talk to us the more we know about what you guys want what you kind of content you guys want what we can put out there um and yeah thank you for tuning in to the world series commander and i will see you next time